Okay, in the last video, we spent a few minutes thinking about the key factors that determine consumer spending. Uh, and I said that in this video, we drill down into a bit more detail and focus on a key concept. And that concept is the marginal propensity to consume, or MPC for short. So what is, what is the marginal propensity to consume? Well, the, the definition is uh, that the MPC is the change in consumer spending arising from, resulting from a change in somebody's disposable income. John Maynard Keynes, undoubtedly, I think, one of the major figures in the history of economics, developed a theory of consumption that depended heavily on the impact of disposable income. Disposable income is income after direct taxes and welfare benefits. Now, the key here is if your income changes, if you get perhaps an increase in your take-home pay, after tax and benefits, how much of that do you choose to spend on goods and services? Alternatively, how much of it do you choose to save? We call this the marginal propensity to spend and save. So, for example, if your disposable income, let's say, rises by, let's say, £5,000, and you choose to spend 4000 of this on additional goods and services, then we say the MPC is 4000 over 5000 or 0.8. Of course, the reverse effect would be that you'll be saving 20% of any gain in income, you're spending 80%. Now, why is the value of the marginal propensity to consume important? Let me take you through one example of a chain of reasoning. The NPC, start with the definition, measures the change in consumer spending following a change in somebody's real, after inflation, disposable income. One reason why the value that the coefficient of the MPC is important, is when the government is considering a cut in direct tax. For example, the government might decide, well, let's go for some temporary tax cuts, let's go for a cut in income tax, we're increasing the tax-free allowance as a way of trying to lift the UK economy out of the current recession as we speak in 2020. So one aim of the tax cut could be to stimulate consumption, to drive aggregate demand, to cause an expansion of supply. Now, the impact of the tax cut on demand depends on the marginal propensity to consume out of extra income. If it's high, if most people are choosing to spend any gain in income rather than save it, then that's going to have a significant effect on demand and could well kickstart the economy. But if households, consumers decide to save most of the gains in disposable income, in other words, the marginal propensity to save is high, then a tax cut might actually be ineffective overall. So you can see, hopefully, how the MPC is quite important when governments decide uh, to make changes in the overall level of taxation. One implication of this might be that the government could do better to target tax reductions, perhaps on families on lower than average incomes who typically have a higher expected MPC. People on low incomes typically spend a higher percentage of any gain in income. So targeted tax cuts could have a bigger effect than a broadly based tax cut for all. Uh, oftentimes in an exam, you actually have to, have to do some calculations. So here is the, some data on income and spending and saving. Don't forget your income can be spent or saved. I hope those figures add up and I think they do. Uh, when income rises from 5,000 to 10,000, people are spending 4,500 more. They're spending 90% of the gain in income. When it goes up from 10,000 to 15,000, they're spending 4,000 more. That's 8.8 proportion or 80% of the change in income. And when income rises from 15,000 to 20,000, well, they're spending 3,000 more, but that's only 60% or 0.6 of the change in income. And by definition, the marginal propensity to consume plus the marginal propensity to save must add up to one. You either spend or save a change in your disposable incomes. OK, I'm just checking to make sure those figures add up. Those are theoretical figures. Let's have a look at the uh, some data for the UK. Are there? Quick reminder, MPC plus MPS will always equal one. Here's the data for the UK. On real disposable income, measured at 19, 2016 prices, consumer spending, I've done the, done the maths for you, I've, I've put the change in the consumption there in column four and the change in disposable incomes in column 
five. So the estimated MPC can be calculated. Uh, it was above one in 2017. People spending rose more than their income. Perhaps people dipped into savings or perhaps people borrowed money to finance the extra spending. But in the last two years, for which I have data, 2018, 2019, consumer spending increased in both years, but it was less than the change in income, suggesting an MPC of less than one. If you take, oh, forecast uh, for 2020, of course, a big drop in consumption and income's going down, but consumer spending is gonna really fall by a lot. Um, if you take the data from 2016 to 2019, you actually get a figure for the MPC of about 0.95, averaging across that period, uh, a, high, a high MPC, suggesting that the people have been saving proportionally less of their income, which indeed has been the case. Okay, that was the MPC. Uh, in our next video, we'll tilt over to spend a few minutes thinking about household saving. Okay, thank you.